All right, what's up, guys? Today we are going to continue talking about our ecology lessons. Um, it looks like section two is all about the flow of energy in an ecosystem. So let's look at this statement here. It says that autotrophs capture energy, making it available for all members of a food web. Now, autotrophs, which we'll look at in a minute, means organisms that make their own food. So plants, obviously, they use the sunlight and make their own food within their cells. Um, I want you to stop and think about how organisms obtain energy. Think about what you already know about how organisms obtain energy. Push pause, think about it for a solid minute, and then we'll carry on in a second. All right, hopefully you had a minute to think about that. Um, today we're going to look at, like I said, how energy flows in an ecosystem. So here are our main ideas or our essential questions for today. It says, what are the producers and consumers in an ecosystem? How does energy flow through an ecosystem? And what are food chains, food webs, and ecological pyramid models? So if you can answer those three questions when we are done, you know exactly what you need to know. Okay, first we're going to look at what are called autotrophs. And a, f a few seconds ago, I already told you what an autotroph is. It's an organism that collects energy from sunlight or inorganic substances to make food, meaning it doesn't eat, it doesn't consume something else. It absorbs sunlight and uses that energy to create its own energy. Autotrophs are the foundation of all ecosystems because they make energy available for all other organisms. If we did not have plants, our planet would fall apart. <laughs> for so many reasons, but in this case, because we wouldn't have the initial source of energy. We'll get to that here in a minute, though. Okay, heterotrophs, or consumers, are organisms that get their energy by consuming other organisms. So an autotroph makes its own food from sunlight. Heterotrophs eat other things. They either eat autotrophs, or they eat other heterotrophs that eat autotrophs, and so on and so on and so on. So you might be thinking, oh man, I never eat vegetables, I hate, I hate salad, I hate plants, I hate lettuce. But in a roundabout way, you are still getting that autotroph energy because if you eat, uh, let's say, a hamburger, the cow that that hamburger came from ate plants, and the plants made its own energy from the sun because it's an autotroph. So indirectly, you still got that same energy. Okay, let's look at these words here. We have herbivore, carnivore, omnivore, and detritivore. These are the four types of heterotrophs. Herbivores eat only plants. Carnivores only eat animals. Omnivores eat both plants and animals. And then you have a detritivore, which eats fragments of dead matter. So think fungus and just nasty stuff that eats decaying, dead, rotted things. That's what a detritivore is. And then of course you have me over here during this quarantine. I'm an om nom 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 nomnivore because I just can't stop snacking on these snacks, but I'm going to keep on going without talking too much about that. But you know what I'm talking about. Okay. <laughs> Models of energy flow. Okay, so we have a few ways that we look at the way that energy flows through a system. We have food chains and food webs, and these are the models that we use to show how energy flows through the ecosystem. Each step in a food chain or a food web is called a trophic level. So we kind of start at the lowest trophic level and keep moving our way up. We'll see that in a second. Organisms at each level get their energy from the trophic level that you will find below them. So if our example is we have grass, and grass is at the lowest trophic level, and then let's say we look at, I don't know, a cow, a cow that's out at pasture eating the grass. The trophic level below the cow is the level where the grass is, so it's getting its energy from the trophic level below it. Now, food chains are really simple compared to food webs. We'll get into those in a second, but a food chain is a simple model that shows how energy flows through an ecosystem. We're going to start in this picture here. We start with a plant, which is a it's it's its own producer. It's an autotroph. It makes its own food. It gets consumed by this grasshopper. The grasshopper gets consumed by this mouse. The mouse gets consumed by this snake, and you can see each level below it 
benefited from the level below it all the way back down to the plant, which initially got its energy from the sun. So that's how we might say we still get energy from the sun, even if we're not eating plants directly. We're still getting that energy from the sun. Okay, now a food web, this is a little bit more complicated than a food chain because it's not just one direct path. It intersects all those paths that a food chain has into one big web. That's Think of a spider web and how a spider web looks, all these different branches that branch out to connect. So a food web is a model representing the many interconnected food chains and pathways in which energy flows through a group of organisms. Over here, we can see, let's find a plant on this picture. Okay, we have this prickly pear cactus, which is eaten by this tortoise. The prickly pear cactus, its energy flows into the tortoise. We have, I don't know, this kangaroo rat, which is a seed eater, so that means it ate some seeds, so the energy went from the seed to the rat. This coyote, which is a carnivore, eats the rat, so the energy now goes from the rat to the coyote. One thing I'll note for you, on a food chain or a food web, the arrow always points in the direction that the energy is flowing. It doesn't point from what it from the thing that's eating to the thing that it's going to eat. It points from it points in the direction where the energy flows. So that's why if we look at this cactus and it's eaten by this tortoise, the arrow goes from the cactus to the tortoise because the energy is represented by the arrow. The arrow shows the direction the energy goes. If we go back to this last picture, the energy goes from the plant to the grasshopper, from the grasshopper to the mouse, from the mouse to the snake. So just that's just a little hint to help you read a food chain or a food web. The arrow points the direction that the energy flows. Okay, now we also have what are called ecological pyramids. An ecological pyramid is a diagram that shows the relative amounts of energy, biomass, or numbers of organisms at each trophic level. So those trophic levels we talked about, these are little visual representations that shows you what organism are, organisms are going to be found in each trophic level. And then again, biomass which we've discussed a little bit in the past, biomass is the total mass of living matter at each trophic level. If we look at this pyramid of energy, we can see that we have producers on the bottom, primary consumers right after that, secondary consumers after that. Primary consumers, that just means it's animals that eat the plants. They only are gonna eat those plants. Now a secondary consumer, it might eat those plants, but it's definitely going to eat the animals that first ate those plants. And it kind of go it's the same throughout all these pyramids. Just keep in mind that it shows how much energy, biomass, and amount of organisms are in each trophic level. That's what you need to know about an ecological pyramid. All right, and that's it. Pretty simple short lesson for today. Um if you need to rewind and go over some slides again, feel free to do that. If you want to look at the PowerPoint and go through it yourself, read through it slowly, that's also great. Um, but go ahead and make your way over to the discussion board for today and answer or respond to today's prompt. And then by the end of the week, make sure you've said some sort of reply to two of your classmates' responses as well.